What a beautiful morning, huh? It's gorgeous. We got lucky. Yeah. In Puerto Morelos, it doesn't get much better than this. The beach is right over there. No. I mean, I have to say, I was here two years ago, right? Yep. We did a little driving tour and I gotta say, I mean, of course it looks the same, but so different. Yeah. Well, but you did have to experience Puerto Morelos a little more because I just didn't get enough to show you like everything that really is around this little gem in the Riviera Maya. Yeah, no, I, I actually have to say like it's, even in the two years I've been here, it's changed so much. There's so much building yes. going on around. Um, I feel like there's more people. There's, but maybe it's just the time of year I'm coming now. But mm -hmm. um, do you feel like there's been a lot of changes here? Well, there's been a lot of growth. That's for sure. Uh, like Puerto Morelos has started to come uh, of more prevalence on the map because the area on the beach side, it's smaller. So it's very much more boutique and you still have that small field town, but being really close to, to Cancun, which is a big city and you're close to the airport. So people absolutely love that. And it's very limited really like the areas where you can go and find something that is like ocean front. Right. So when people come visit, they see, fall in love and they just gobble it up. Right. Now, so like, so today I want to talk about real estate investment, right? Yes. In the Riviera Maya Great. in particular, because I feel like there's just a lot of infrastructure um, investment happening here, which I think will lead to real estate investment. If, yes. I mean, it's already led to a real, inve yes. real estate investment. I don't know. It's kind of like the chicken and the egg where I don't know what came first. I know, right? <laughs> but in terms of like, like infrastructure, right? Investment here yes. in the region. What do you see happening? Well, the federal government has really put a lot of money into this area. I mean, when you think about it in terms of tourism. So the busiest international airport in all of Mexico is the Cancun airport. You have so many millions of travelers that come through here every year. So from a dollar uh, perspective for the country, this is really, really good. Uh, tourism in Mexico is like, I want to say fifth in the world. Somewhere around there is very, very high. Wow. And they have been working towards that. And Mexico is a place that people really, really love. And this area in particular, the Riviera Maya, is something that everybody likes to come to because there's so much accessibility from flights. Right. And the government has seen that and they want to, you know, you want to protect it. So now you have, for example, the train, the Mayan train that is now starting to operate. It's still in the very beginning stages. You still have stations that are still opening, but it is happening. Yeah, so Puerto Morelos open, Playa del mm -hmm. Carmen open. Cancun. Cancun, and then the other side as well. The other side you still have like through Chiapas, like in Palenque it's open, in Campeche it's open, in the Yucatan through Merida it's open. You still have, a, you know, you're going to make it like a big, big loop all around the Yucatan Peninsula. So within what they're saying is probably towards the end of the year, that whole project is going to be completed. And it's again on the beginning stages, because, for example, right. now here in Puerto Morelos, they're doing the tourist uh, wagons, but there's also going to be sleeper cars and there's going to be uh, like a restaurant car that, that I mean, to where you can like actually like Dying. Oh, really? Well, yep. Dying while Whoa. you're going through the train. Oh, right. that's fun. And then in Tulum, like there has been years and years and years. Oh, we're going to build an airport. We're going to build an airport. Well, guess what? This government actually did it. So now Tulum has its international airport that opened. Again, it's still at the very beginning stages. But now I believe it was last week or recently within the next, last like couple of weeks, uh, from it opening, now American Airlines had their first flight from Dallas that landed in Tulum. So through the summer, you're going to see like more addition of flights. They have to take it a little slow because you want to work out all the kinks, right? You can't just go full on big and then right. and then have stuff not go right. Of course, of course. Cancun, sometimes we tend to not talk so much about but Cancun is a very large metropolitan city where you have absolutely everything. And now one thing that the government is doing that is super, super cool that I really like is a bridge that is going to be connecting like the hotel zone side with the lagoon side. They're making some big infrastructure project. And I feel that what you're going to see now with all of these things that are now being created and being implemented and being open, 
you're also going to have a lot of improvement on accessibility roads because up until now, and this is something that is important to keep in mind, I mean, Quintana Roo is just over 50 years old. So when you think about it in terms That's of a it? city, yep, it's just a little over 50, maybe like 55, somewhere around there. It's not very As old. a state, you mean? As a state. Cancun was founded around 1972. Such a young city. It's wow. a very, and look at everything that is here. That's insane. It's crazy. It's crazy. So with that speed, you've had, of course, growing pains. And like one of them, for example, is the federal highway, the 307, because that is like the one road that connects from the very beginning of Cancun all the way to the bottom to Chetumal where uh, that's the capital of Quintana Road that, I mean, like eventually, like where it ends, you go into Belize. Right. So um, it's important to have alternate routes. And now with the, you know, the implementation of the train, with the creation of the airport in Tulum, I mean, roads and all of that's going to start developing as well. Um, they just want to make sure that it's being done in a more controlled manner. Because, right, I'm, well, yeah, unfortunately here sometimes you can do things that's like, oh my gosh, great idea to do this. And then they have to like redo it because it wasn't, you know, efficient. So they're learning from that. And the reason sometimes that you see that growth having to take place at a rapid speed or go faster than maybe it normally should is because of all the people that are coming here not only to travel, but that are coming here to buy and to invest and all these hotel chains. I mean, uh, Hilton came recently, I mean, like with four different properties. So that's that's a lot of rooms and yeah. that's a lot more people that are coming. Right, right. So, OK, so let's switch to actual real estate investment, yes. which I find, you know, doing house hunters and just coming here you just <laughs> see the explosion and just all you have to do is like walk down the street yeah. these days actually and you just see so much construction happening of these condos that are being built yep. and stuff so give me your opinion give me your honest opinion on okay so say somebody is interested in perhaps buying here you know as a full-time property or as you know as a rental property they want to come sure. here for a few months of the year like what do they really need to know about this region mm -hmm. particularly and like what kind of homework do they need to be doing so i mean like i would say people's like biggest dream normally aside from owning everybody wants to be in front of the ocean and that's something that you really have to consider and think about if that's really what you want because sometimes something that you don't know is the salt and the sun and the sea and the humidity. So a property that is going to be oceanfront is going to be, I mean, financially not only more expensive, but to maintain it is so much more expensive because you have to do double, triple, four times the maintenance that you would do on something that is just a little bit off. Right. Well, actually, that is really really valuable right because i think yes. people think oh being butt in front of the ocean is sexy and yeah. it's going to be a great investment which it is yes but if you're not willing to do the maintenance on it yeah. you know or if you're not willing to budget for the maintenance of yes. what that's going to cost you annually exactly. you're going to get into deep doo-doo really yes. quickly <laughs> well you know what it's true that's an absolutely right and something that is really important is for you to really think about what you want do you want a house do you want an apartment? Do you want a condo hotel? Because there is different types of products that fit the different needs of the buyer. Right. So the more clear that you can be with that and also with your budget, something that is super important, like for example, here there is in Mexico, there is no um, financing available to foreign buyers from Mexican banks. There are some uh, hard money funds that do offer financing to foreigners, but you're gonna have an attached interest rate to that that is might be something a little bit higher than people are used to. Yeah, yeah, so, I know the interest rates here will be higher, yes. so that's why it's better to either have financing done in the States or in Canada and then bring that yes, cash over, right? exactly. And I mean, even for like nationals, they really like buy, like the culture here is that you buy what you can afford in, in cash, rather than what you can do on a mortgage payment. Right. because of those interest rates. But what that has done is that it keeps the value of the property so you don't have this like super inflated price and then boom, like it just goes down. No, things stay very, very, very steady because of that conservative aspect of the market. Right, right. 
So if you're looking at, say, pre-construction, right, and you have your heart set on an oceanfront, yes. right, um, what kinds of things should you be thinking about before doing that investment, um, like in terms of the developer and then in terms of like the HOA costs and, um, you know, what are they going to actually take care of? You know, sure. what is re what is your responsibility? What is the responsibility of the building? Yes. So, I mean, if you decide that, okay, that you have your heart set on something in front of the ocean. Or it doesn't even have to be ocean, yeah. but I mean, I know that there's yeah. more stuff to do. Of course. Oh, no, about. no, no, there's so much more. But okay, so let's talk about it because this actually applies for everybody. Right. So um, you have to see who the developers, who's behind the construction. If you're looking at new construction, which most people like the idea that now that there is like a large inventory available, that you can buy something new because you're the first owner and there are warranties and things that come with a brand new property. But the developer is very important. Um, you want to make sure that it's somebody that, first of all, has built in this area, that they know that whoever their partner, whoever they're working with, that they know how to build here. Because building in the Riviera Maya is much more different than building in, I don't know, Guadalajara, Monterrey, Mexico City. You have a different climate and you have a different way of being able to build things. Because here you have to make sure that they last. Yeah, so, of course. Right. So, and, and sometimes, like I said, you know, because of the climate, it can be unforgiving in that. So you definitely right. need to know right. what you're and, doing. And that's the thing. I think people don't realize that Mexico has so many different climates. Exactly. Right? And you have, you know, and we were even talking about, like, the different woods, the different trees, Absolutely. the different materials. Like, you just use different things depending it's on good. what region you're in. Yeah, because, I mean, you can bring something foreign that might be really beautiful in Mexico City, and over here, it dies. You know? <laughs> so, it's like, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so you have to know how to do that. Um, also, like, the, the funding, or who, who is the developer? What have they done? What is their history? What are, like... Their, their finances, I mean, are they solely depending on sales in order to move forward at construction? There are some that do. They, they know what they're doing. But, like, I like to find those that don't need the money, you know, or your money to be able to build, you know. Or if they do, it's in a very small amount because it ensures that the construction is moving along. It ensures that, I mean, if they say, okay, we're going to be finished by this time, that is going to be pretty close to that. I mean, you know, you have a storm or things that might delay, then, you know, it'll get a little bit late, but not crazily. So somebody that is that is really, uh, like, stable in as far as construction is something that is important. That they know how to use good finishes, good quality products, that they're not cutting corners. Um, and then... How do you know, though? Like... I guess, is that where a real estate professional yeah, kind of comes into I mean, play? Right? I, I, if I, I can walk into a property and, and I mean, and now just after like actually being also working this market for like the last 12 years and being able to see things that last. You can tell like that, right? Oh, yes. I mean, because it becomes sometimes when somebody's cutting corners, unfortunately, and it's sad, it becomes so obvious. Right. So, you're like, yeah, especially if you're experienced, and that's where experience is like so critical. Yeah. yeah, I totally get that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and it's important, you know, also to deal with an external broker. I, I feel that that's very important because, I mean, obviously, like the development companies, they also have like their, their salespeople, and for them, that's also obviously more beneficial. But, for example, when is the representative of the developer ever going to tell you, oh, yeah, no, I mean, we are kind of good. <laughs> but we also suck some, you know, or we're right, cutting right. corners. Of course, there's a conflict this. of interest, to be honest. Absolutely, I mean, yeah. absolutely. And then when it comes also to, like, the legal part of it, right. you know, I mean, you could go with the developer's attorney, but who's paying that attorney? You right. Know? right. <laughs> no, that's true. And I think that that's, yeah. it's great to be able to share that kind of information yeah. and knowledge. And because I think that some people have shiny object syndrome, right? They get really excited because yes. they see the pretty poster and they see yes. the pretty advertisements or whatever. And they're like, oh my God, I need to get that. Yes. Um, and not realizing all the little steps yes. and all the little kind of check marks you really need to do homework. Mm -hmm. the, the not so fun stuff. It's so important 
for somebody that is buying also to control that over excitement because obviously if you're dealing directly with like say the developer's rep you're like oh my god yes great and, and then you're more liable to just go sign and do something really fast whereas when you're with somebody that is an intermediary that is going to present to you an array of different products and is going to show you different options based on your needs then like a lot of that homework is going to be done and, and, and it's just like it, it, like it can be a little more controlled. Yeah. And that definitely helps. Location is something that is obviously very important. Um, so if you want a place that is like, you know what, I'm just going to rent it and I want it to be like a condo that I can use, but that it operates as a hotel so I don't have to worry about anything. Then I mean, there are projects that you can do that, but it's important to also on that find out how they're doing it. Are they running it themselves? Are they do they have experience in running hotels? If they don't, then there's been some horror stories. Yeah. So I mean, like you want to find out, say that a builder is doing a condo hotel, you know, developer is doing a condo hotel, and then how is that operation gonna take place? Is the developer doing it, or are they hiring a hotel operator to do it? Because there's not a lot of uh, developers that are also into the hotel business. They're in the business of building. And sometimes in that desire of want to like grab all that other market, then they'll start doing the hoteling and that's two different animals. Right, right. So, you know, you have to find the person that can do it because then as a buyer, your investment is going to be protected. Right, right. Which is a really interesting point, right? So, okay. So if, if you want to um, invest in a property, say you're not ready to retire yet, right? Yeah. You want to retire in 10 years, but you want to buy your property now, yes. right? You have the money now. Um, and so you want to rent it out. So you do have the option of doing like kind of the Airbnb model, right? Yes. Hiring a property manager or doing it yourself, which is a lot of work. I yes. know people who've done that. Um, or there's this new condo hotel model that you keep talking about, yes. um, which I had not really heard about until here. Like, yes. I feel like, and um, you showed me one a couple of years ago and it's a really interesting model, right? Because it's very yes. hands off. So there's kind of like you do it yourself completely. Mm -hmm. You kind of do it. You kind of monitor the monies. And then the condo hotel is like completely hands off. Correct. So can you tell me a little bit about the differences between Absolutely. each one? You, sure. So for example, like the Airbnb model. So it's a regular condominium in a regular development. And you hire maybe a property manager that helps you run your Airbnb page. And you do rentals. And you can choose to do long-term rentals. You can choose to do vacation rentals. So that's something that you could do. Um, you can have just a full-on residential, which there's also areas where you can just buy your property and you can come and live it. Or maybe you can rent it long-term if you're not going to be right away. If you're not going to be coming, you can rent it for a year, two years, six months, whatever. You know, so you have that option. And then the condo hotel, that's something that has been coming uh, more prevalent, more popular, because is that having to not worry about anything, right? Right. It's totally hands off, right? You just kind of get a little off. bit of money in your bank account exactly. you know, every month or whatever. It's just like a like, sure. nice little gift. Yeah. And on that model, you have different, you know, there's some like, a, I believe what I showed you that has like a limited use for a set amount of time. Right. You know, um, there are some. That so there's are, some that have like rules. Yes, there are some that have like those rules where they say, okay, you can only use it, say, for like six weeks out of the year, the rest of the time we operate it. But you don't have to worry ever about anything. Uh, maybe you can't come at Christmas or you can't come at this. Right. There are some that will be like, okay, you can use it for eight weeks and you can come at Christmas or, you know, whatever. Um, what is starting to come now and is going to be interesting to see as it develops is to having that like, condominium type condo hotel model but to where you can use it for as long as you want if you want to use it for six months you can but then you know if you put it in the rental pool if you don't put it in the rental pool you cannot rent it and that's important because then you're keeping the price integrity of the whole project and it is encouraged for you to also put it to rent it's right. important Right. It makes a big difference. Right. Well, uh, that's if you want to be making the money. Like, yeah. what's important to you for having the flexibility to stay there or to make some money? And that's right? where, and that's where the buyer has the power to decide, because they might decide that like one year they want to come and spend six months. It's like great, that's awesome. But just understand that your returns, your income is not going to be as good to when you're only using it maybe two weeks out of the year. Right. You know? Exactly. Exactly. So, but but like giving the buyer, the client that control that it, it's good, 
And these projects also, they're doing them in a way that although it needs to have the, the, the durability of a hotel because you have a lot of people coming in, the furnishings, the decor, the lighting, the construction of it makes it to is also very residential. So if you decided that you wanted to come and do full time, you completely could and you wouldn't feel like you're in a hotel room. Right, exactly. And I think the hotel condo models oftentimes, you know, comes completely furnished, yes. right? So in the and price, equipped. right, the price includes all the furniture. Everything. Right. Everything. Where, um, you know, perhaps like a new construction where you're just doing for rental may or may not Correct. have furniture. Included. Yeah, they would have it to where maybe they're equipped, you know, with like your air conditioners and your fans and, you know, whatever that equipped means to the developer and it's going to be listed for the contract and in all that stuff or it might be partially furnished or maybe like it includes a refrigerator like all these things depend but it's important to ask those questions and see what it comes and making sure that all those things are also included as an annex in a contract right. for example right exactly exactly do you dream of owning an oceanfront property overlooking the Caribbean, waking up to the beautiful sunrises and sounds of gentle waves, or taking afternoon strolls barefoot on the beach? Well, there's an amazing brand new condo hotel that's being built in Puerto Morelos, Mexico that I wanted to share with you. What's a condo hotel? It's basically just that. You stay there when you want, and then the rest of the time it gets rented out as a hotel room so you can make some income on the property when you're not there. And actually for the bigger suites, you can lock off a room so you could actually rent it while you're staying there. You can choose from a loft all the way up to a three bedroom penthouse and they all have outdoor space, which is amazing. There's gonna be a gorgeous infinity pool, amazing rooftop sky bar, top of the line gym, spa and restaurant. My real estate agent friend, Susie McDonald and I got to check out this new development and I gotta tell you, it is going to be incredible. The building is scheduled to be delivered by the end of 2025. So if you want to get in early for reduced pricing or want more information, email us at hello at dreamretirementinmexico.com. And we're happy to answer any questions that you might have. If an oceanfront condo is your dream, then you're definitely going to want to check it out. I want to talk about two things, financing and amenities. Okay. So financing. Um, so I know that most properties here Mm -hmm. in Mexico when foreigners come to purchase they're mm -hmm. paying cash correct right absolutely yes it's like high it's like 90 percent of the people pay cash so how oh <laughs> <laughs> okay so a lot of times I know they're either getting financing in their home country yes. or they're just bringing piles of <laughs> dinero <laughs> so well they used to be able to bring the piles of dinero but not anymore because of all the money laundering laws uh, okay. so it has to be done like via wire transfer you have to be able to show where the money is coming from where it's going and the purpose of, of, of the of the large sum so um let's start with with the financing so the reason why people also like the brand new pre-construction is because it gives them a couple of years to pay. For example, if you're going into a brand new project that is just starting, you know, you'll have to pay, normally it's around like 30% of the purchase price that you have agreed with the developer. And there are some that say, okay, then you'll pay X amount during the construction and X amount at balance. There are some that will say, okay, you give me the 30% now and the 70% you give it to me when I give you the keys. So for a lot of people that works, especially if you're talking something that is a gap of, you know, like, I don't know, like one and a half to three years, you know, depending on the scale of the project. There is also some hard money funds that have started to offer loans for foreigners. And you can do up to like a 20 year loan with them. However, you're going to pay for that loan. You're going to pay for that loan because the interest rates are not low um, I've had clients that use it for like a limited amount of time that they know that they have money in but like a gap also, loan yeah, yeah a gap loan exactly they know that it's just gonna be for a very limited amount of time and then it's worth it obviously it's important to make sure that there is no uh, prepayment penalty and to understand very well what the um, what the loan rules are with with, with with whoever is doing that loan there's very rare cases, not a lot, but there are some here where the developer will actually do some financing for a buyer. 
so you don't need any qualifications or anything but uh there is a project that i know of going towards uh towards tulum on Ishpuha, where they're like financing the lots mm. you that you do an x amount of uh, down payment mm -hmm. and then they, they do it up to 12 years so for somebody sometimes that maybe they want land that maybe to build then that's something that works Again, important to find out if you can start doing something to the land prior to finish paying off the, 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 the loan that the developer did or, you know, all those rules. And those things are important to find out. Are there any kind of like red flags that people really like they should run? If, if a developer or somebody is like they say something, they should know like this is not a legit thing or it's not... You know, I just, sure. I don't know whether, you know, especially when it comes to the financing or putting down cash, it makes me nervous. You know, if, if they've course. never invested in Mexico before, um, I don't know if there's any kind of big things that people should kind of be thinking oh, about. Oh, absolutely. I mean, before you're putting in any kind of payment or anything, man, hire an attorney and make sure that you're doing the due diligence. Right. Because, I mean, you want to make sure, for example, if a developer is selling you a project, it'd be good if they own the land. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right, right. And that's happened, right? It's, it's happened to where it's like they haven't finished buying the land or it's on a, like to where it's not. If things are not clear, run away. Right. If there, if a developer is not willing to provide all the information required for that proper due diligence, if something is not right, run away. Looking at how they do with the projects that they build. Are they on time? How do they look? Uh, also on the payment structure on how much money they need or, or they're asking from you, like that's gonna say a lot. You know, sometimes if they're not willing to compromise in that middle amount, like it makes me not comfortable. I'd be like, well, you know, they should be able to work with the buyer because in essence, if they're not willing to work, then they need your money to build. Right. You know, right. and, and Yeah, I mean, like, for example, me, somebody that is coming in brand, 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 brand new that haven't done anything before, I like to really vet the developer to see how they're doing things. And I mean, I, I want you, if you haven't done anything, then please be funded. Right. Because if not, I'm not going to sell you because I want to see what you do. Right. You know what I mean? And, and I think you also, you know, we've talked a little bit about this. Also being ethical, right? Absolutely. That they're not a developer that's just going to come in and destroy the, the region, yes. not just come in and, you know, bulldoze and really be respectful of, you know, I, I understand it's kind of like this give and take, right? Yes. Um, with growth comes development comes, you know, yes. all this stuff, but there is a way to be respectful of the environment and the community Absolutely. and the people around. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, and that's something that I also like to find out and, and, and to ask and see, I mean, like socially, What are you doing to benefit the area where you're coming to build? Because it's awesome that you're doing this beautiful building. But how are you benefiting the place where you're coming to make such an impact? How are you generating the jobs? How The, the people, the, the, the builders, you know, are they from the area? Are you generating jobs here? How is your studies of the ground to where, like, your impact? Yes, you're going to have some, but that is not... Like that you're completely destroying, you know, what are you doing to contribute to to maintain this area? Because this is a very de delicate ecosystem that we have in the Riviera Maya. And because of uh, like all the underground rivers and all these things, I mean, how you build, how you dig down, how you do all these things is going to have a huge impact. And if somebody's not conscious or not taking all those things into accountability, then it's somebody that's just coming in here to abuse the, the, the land and coming to abuse the people and the state and the country. And I mean, that's not cool. Right. Right. So there is a delicate balance that has to be yes. maintained there and a respect, you yes. know. Um, and then uh, so just in terms of kind of switching gears to amenities, yes. because this is something that oh, yeah. uh, Like witnessing some of the stuff that's going on in these buildings, it's crazy. Like yes. the very fancy kind of all-in packages, and I think it, you, I don't know. A lot of people don't even know, right? It's not you're not only getting an apartment or a condo or no. whatever, but you're getting a lot of bells and whistles as well. Absolutely. So, uh, so a lot of these new projects because people like to have 
all the goodies also within the apartment. And when you go vacation, you know, to where you know you don't have to go out for everything. So you have like a, a nice gym, great pool, restaurant, bar, yoga lounge, spa, like all these things. So a lot of these new projects have amenities. Something that is important to always keep in mind with all of these amenities that come is that there is a cost. And it's important to understand that those costs are going to be charged into maintenance or asking the developer, okay, how is this being managed? You know, is it, I mean, we get all the benefits. You will have to pay for the services, but are they taking care of it or do they have an outside uh, vendor, provider, operator doing it? Because if that's the case, then, I mean, maybe your condo fees might be a little bit more uh, lower, you know, whereas if they're like taking care of everything, they're going to be higher. So um, understanding that uh, normally how it works is like there's a, a set amount, a dollar amount, let's say, for per square meter of construction. So based on the size of the unit is going to be the rate of what they're going to charge you for those amenities. And what do the amenities include? Right. And depending on the size of the project, you know, I mean, like those dollars depend because, for example, an elevator is great in any building. But to maintain an elevator, it costs money. And sometimes people are a little not hesitant, but not thrilled that like the maintenance, what they make might consider high mm -hmm. because of an elevator and a pool. I mean, especially on projects that might be like smaller, those rates could be higher. On a bigger project, you have more amenities, but also like that's right. going to There's more people to split the cost, right? Exactly. Right. But also like the maintenance fee might be a little higher. Right. Right. So it's just, it, and it's important to look at those things right. when you're searching for a property. Right. So, okay. So we're going to wrap things up. Okay. Um, kind of any last thoughts of things that you really would love for people who are potentially looking to invest in Mexico, real estate wise. Sure. Um, what they would, what they should be thinking about, you know, what's the, like the kind of first step. So the first step is to find somebody that they're very comfortable working with, that they trust for them to be their eyes and ears in the area. Start asking for that realtor's license. Right. You know, find somebody that is licensed, that understands the laws, that understands the market, and that are going to be able to help you go through, through the whole process. Be clear about what you want as far as a property the area find the ones that you like the most because each area is different and to be able to see if you want to see things in playa and tulum and puerto morelos make sure that you have a lot of time because you're going to have to do like one per day <laughs> yeah, i mean right. one area per day with like different properties but like understanding what is like what you want is going to make it much more helpful And when you're sitting down, because we're talking an investment, and I don't care if it's, you know, $50,000 to $7 million or to whatever it is, whoever you're going to be sitting with or whoever you're, take the time to sit down and give them as much information as you can about what you want, where the finances are. And also ask them all the questions that you need, that you want to know about that agent, about that broker. Uh, don't get caught up on the, oh my God, yes. And oh, they're going to sell it all now. And go, we can always find something. We can always find something. But it's important to take your time so that you can do a safe purchase, that you can do something that is going to bring you joy and not headaches. That's the most important thing. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Susie. Oh, yeah, thank you. I always love to see you, Risa. Always. Let's so. go to the beach. Okay, yeah, ready. <laughs>